Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well today. Welcome to our Applied Mechanics lesson. So in today's video, in today's lesson, we will be going through one more example where we are calculating the reaction of specific forces. And this falls under our vectors, equilibrium, and resultant chapter in our Applied Mechanics textbook. Okay, so I'll start off by reading out the question and then we'll move on to essentially drawing out the diagram as the question reads. And then we'll represent that using our diagram of forces. And then from that point, we use our cosine rule to get the magnitude. And then we use a sine rule to get our um, direction. Those are essentially the steps that we are going to follow. All right. So it reads as follows. Two ropes are tied to a fixed nail. So we know that there's a nail somewhere in the mix. And there's two ropes. The tension in the ropes is 10 newtons and 20 newtons respectively, while the angle between them is 120 degrees. So for now, I'll just have one going there, one going there, right? And I want us to pay attention to a key thing. It said the tension in the ropes is, and then it gave the uh, magnitude of those. Now, I want us to quickly look into what tension means. So tension means a pulling act. It means both of these are pulling or tugging away from the set pin. If it had said the compression in the ropes, I don't know how the ropes would have compression. It would probably need to be a steel wire in order for it to experience compression. But if it had said, for purposes of making this make sense, if it had said the compression in maybe the steel wires is a certain value, then it would have told you that they are both pushing into the nail as opposed to pulling away from it. So I just need us to understand that if you get a question that tells you about tension in both the ropes, then you need to already say, ah, it's pulling away. It's not pushing into. All right. So this is then what governs the behavior. Right. Um, then it says there is 10 newtons and there is 20 newtons. There's an angle of 120 degrees there in between them. Okay. So I'm just going to assume this is the 10 newton one and that's the 20 newton one. Why am I assuming this? Hey, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Right. Then, um, I feel like it's easier when you assume one of them is horizontal because it makes your life a little bit easier in terms of the angles that you'll be working with, especially when you now need to represent it as a diagram of forces. So remember we said step one, you show the diagram the way as best as you understand the question. Then step two, we're now going to try and represent that as a diagram of forces. And you might recall from my previous video, I said my rule of thumb. My personal rule of thumb is that I start with the horizontal one. I start with the horizontal one. Now, with the um, diagram of forces, there is no one specific one that is cast in stone. Okay, How you go about it is upon your own discretion. But I always prefer that I start with the horizontal one. And my rule of thumb, or the second rule of thumb, is essentially how you arrange them. Like, so the end of one will be the start of another. So since you already start with the horizontal one that has a magnitude of that 20 newtons, then I know that I'm going to start with the diagonal one somewhere here. And that one is of 10 newtons. Then I know that I'm trying to calculate what is essentially happening between these two. And this is my assumed direction, right? So I'll just have that as my reaction side. Then the next point, we are just going to go about labeling our triangle. So A, B, C. I didn't leave space for C, but anyway, we know. Then we know that across from those, essentially, we have the tiny manglani ones. Okay. Now, from this portion over here, this 120 wasn't just told to us in G, just to take up space. It's to help us get our lives together. So we know that. The sum of the angles on a straight line equate to 180. So if you did 180 minus 120, essentially it gives you this included angle on here, right? Then we already know, since it follows the same route on here, we have that angle of 60 degrees. It's on there, okay? Then now we will be adopting our first fighter, our cosine rule, okay? Our cosine rule. 
and we look at what we have, we look at what we're looking for, and then it helps us come up with the best possible combination to solve for it. So we have included angle at A. It already tells us whatever formula we use has to have that cos of A right at the end. So it's the one where it says A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos of A. I want you to dream about this tonight, right? And already by looking at that formula, it tells us that we are actually solving for the magnitude of A. Okay, then we're going to leave that alone for now. Then we know that our magnitude at B, 10. Our magnitude at C, 20. Minus 2, 10 times 20 plus of 60 degrees. Okay, I'm going to try plugging this whole thing into the calculator. I'm fighting the urge to do it in bits and pieces, but I want to try just for today to plug this whole thing into the calculator. 2 into 10 into 20 cos of 60. <laughs> this is not satisfying. The part where I don't break it down in pieces. Okay, I get A squared is equal to 300, but remember, we're not looking for A squared, we're looking for A. So the root of 300 gives me 17.32. I feel like we've seen this before. But anyway, let's trust the process. Maybe I'm the one who keeps coming up with the same numbers. Right, so now we have the magnitude of our reaction, 17.32 newtons. And essentially, we know the value of our reaction on there. The next, we are going to call on our second fighter, which is our sine root. And we are trying to figure out the direction of this force. We're trying to see if our assumption was correct, right? So from this diagram over here, there's our north, there's our south, there's our east, and there's our west. Based on our diagram on here, we have said that this is how it will be acting. We have assumed. I'm just taking it directly from this diagram. So we know that our force falls somewhere within the specific quadrant, right? Then you would remember our sine rule says A over sine of A is equal to B over sine of B is equal to C over sine of C, okay? Then we look at what we have and what we're trying to get, okay? Already we have the angle at A and we just calculated the resultant, so that's what we'll be using. Then next, we'd essentially use either B or C. It just depends on which one we're trying to calculate. So we're trying to calculate the angle theta on there, which is at B, and we can use the length of B. So we could use B over sine of B is equals to A over sine of A. I hope it is. Okay. Then our length at B is 10. Our sine theta, that's what we're trying to calculate. Our length at A, we just got the value of 17.32. Sine at A is our sine 60. Okay. That's essentially how we are solving for this bad boy over here. Then we can cross multiply. Then I get... 17.32 sine of theta is equals to 10 sine of 60. Then we can divide both sides by 17.32, divide by 17.32. Sine of theta is equals to 10 sine 60 over 17.32. I know I'm essentially writing this thing out like 20 times for no reason, but bear with me. I'm satisfying my brain. Over 17.32. Then you can plug that whole thing into the calculator and see what it gives you. 17.32. Then I get theta is, it says 30.0009, so I'll just say 30.0, which is 30. And don't forget to add the cherry on top. We've already determined that it is in a southwesterly direction, so south of west. All of this is happening at 30 degrees south of west, and that is essentially how you go about solving your vectors using your cosine and your sine rule. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Adios.